Hello there and welcome. I'm really happy that you found my video. Today I will make a big bowl using coils. The first thing I do is roll out a slab with a rolling pin and then I cut around it to make a round shape for the bottom. You can of course use a plate or something else and draw a line around it but I prefer doing it just by hand like this. I try to keep my hand steady when I cut with the needle tool. This way I know it's going to be a round shape. A piece of plastic and uh, I turn it all around. This way it will not dry too quickly. I have already wedged this clay. I have kind of a big piece of clay in front of me and as you can see I twist the clay every now and then and then roll it with my fingers and the paw of my hand. This piece is going to be many coils. Always when you roll out coils like this it's good to check the ends of the coil because sometimes you might squeeze in some air at the end. Don't do that, so you might consider cutting away a little bit from the end. I try to make them the same thickness, all coils and all the way through the whole coil. And of course, big enough so it fits my bottom. By using this technique, you can make bottles, big bowls, you can make bonsai pots, you can make um, anything that goes into the oven. Well, lots and lots of things, even sculptures. When I have prepared all of my coils, and I might even need some more, I will just put them inside a piece of plastic. If I leave them in the air, they might dry too quickly. So I cover them up and I have a lot of coils to use later. I put the bottom piece in the center of a turning wheel. And then I use slip and of course I have to score the clay. This is important if you want it to hold water afterwards. The first coil is now in place and uh, I actually use a wooden tool to make it really tight against the bottom and I try to make this as round as possible. Use your fingers and your hands and uh, in this case I also use a tool on the inside to get it to really stick. It's now time to put the second coil on so I score and I slip and then again the next coil. This technique is really easy so there's no big mysteries in this. Just use slip in between the different coils and uh, use your fingers so that it sticks well. Your hands and your fingers are the greatest tools. One other thing to remember is that when you build with coils, when you have reached the full circle and you have to cut away the extra clay, remember don't put the seams on top of each other. Try to make them in different places. This way it's easier to get a good shape 
and the bowl will hold better. If you are going to build a bowl like this, about the same size as I'm doing right now, you can do it all at once. But if you build something even bigger, it's good to take a break so that the layers underneath dries up a little bit or use a hairdryer in between. Otherwise, the weight of the clay might be too much and you will lose the shape of your bowl. More coils, more layers and, of course, slip and score. Remember, the slip that you use should always be made of the same clay as you build with. Always when you build with coils, you have to decide if you want the coils to show or if you will smoothen it all out. I want this to be a coiled pot that you can see the coils, but still I will smoothen out a little bit on the inside and also on the outside. I want some effects with my glazing afterwards, so the coils can show. If you don't have a turntable, as I do, you can always put your bowl on a stool in front of you and instead of having the turntable turning, you can turn yourself around the clay so you walk around the thing you're building. I now try to refine my shape and I want this bowl to go a little bit inwards at the end. This is not the rim yet, but I want it to turn a little bit. With my wooden tool, I've smoothened the edges out a little bit. The whole pot will also grow if you do it like this. And remember, it's good to have one hand inside of the pot. This way you can feel if it's too thick or if it gets too thin in some places. It also gives extra support. It's now time for the rim, and as you can see, I make this coil a little bit thicker. I could just attach it like this and leave it like that, but uh, in this case I want it to be a little bit higher so I flatten the coil out and this way I get the rim a little bit bigger. Lock your fingers in position and turn the whole pot around. This way it will be the same thickness all the way around. It's now time to do the finishing touches. Here we go. This is what it looks like. And it's now time to let it dry. The bowl has now been in a bisque fire. And I've used some stains, the white underneath, and an underglaze, the blue color. This is more or less just an experiment, so I brush on now a white matte glaze and uh, as you can see I brush a whole lot and it doesn't matter if it's a little bit runny. When you brush the glaze on like this it will be a little bit rough, so if you want it really smooth it's better to dip it in glaze. The clay I use is a stoneware clay and I will burn this in 1250 degrees celsius and of course 
the glaze should be a stonewall glaze too. Almost done, and uh, next up is a little bit of copper oxides. Because I have this white glaze, I can now mix copper oxide and water, just like watercolors, and paint that on. The copper oxide will react with the white glaze. And always when you do things like this, remember to try out a little bit in advance on a small test tile, because sometimes the glaze might be really runny when you mix it with oxides. I have already tried this combination and I know that this will not be runny. So I paint on this pattern and um, after that it's time for me to put it in a kiln. It's also of course important that I clean the base underneath Otherwise, it might stick in the kiln, because the glaze will be like a glue. A few more crosses and lines to this pattern, and uh, I'm done. The next thing is, of course, the last firing in a kiln, 1250 degrees. This is the final piece, and you can see it's a little bit rough, but I really like the colors. Thank you so much for watching, I hope to see you again, bye bye.